What's going on, savages? We have a mini savage here today taking her nap. Oh. I'm gonna be sharing with you some shorts that are gonna change how you think about weight loss. Every once in a while on your weight loss journey, you get a little bit demotivated, you feel like you've lost your way. And so if that's you, this video is going to re-inspire you. If you're new here, I make evidence-based videos on health, wellness, and weight loss. So if that sounds fun to you, please subscribe. Let's check out this first video. You work out for a year and you only lose 10 pounds. First of all, this girl's beautiful, like, still beautiful she is a lot leaner in the after transformation look at that waist to hip ratio there one of the things that we get tripped up on in our fat loss journey is we get too fixated on the scale you'd think she would have lost more weight because she looks a lot smaller in her waist but really what she did here is she gained some muscle and lost some fat when we get too fixated on the scale it can sometimes discourage us because the scale doesn't give the whole truth of what's going on i'll give you an example i'm taking measurements on my postpartum journey to see how much weight I'm losing because I want to get back into shape. I want to feel like myself again. I want to feel energized. And most importantly, I want to get strong as, as, as earmuffs. I want to get strong. I was tripped up because I took my weight at six weeks postpartum and then I took it at seven weeks postpartum. I'll put a uh, before and after here, but I gained a pound of weight. But if you look at the week to week photos, you could definitely tell that I am losing fat and gaining muscle. So the scale, while it is a good metric to see the overall trend downward in most cases, the rate of change on the scale is not representative of how much progress you've actually made. Other measures of progress can be, how are you feeling? Are you feeling more energized? Are you feeling lighter? Are your clothes fitting better? Are you getting stronger? That's always my North Star metric. Am I actually getting stronger? So don't let the scale dictate how you're gonna feel that day about your weight loss journey. I know we always hear that, but this short was a good example to show that, and my story as well. Like, I literally gained a pound over the course of a week, but I look leaner. It's also worth talking about BMI for a second. So BMI is the metric that doctors and insurance companies use to put you in a classification of a normal healthy weight or putting you in the obese category. If you're in the obese category, you can get access to certain drugs. Uh, it, they classify uh, certain things for insurance, certain ways. So it's just kind of like a, a I guess, a medical metric, the BMI. But it's also kind of BS because it doesn't take into account how much muscle you're carrying. A lot of bodybuilders, for example, will look like they are overweight or obese just because they're carrying so much muscle. And I right now, um, at seven weeks postpartum, would look, uh, I'm technically overweight right now. And even if I get down to my pre-pregnancy weight, I'm still on the cusp of being overweight. I'm like, I think the cutoff for me, I'm 5'2". So 136 pounds is where I'm technically overweight. I'm still almost overweight at my pre-pregnancy weight, which is crazy because I don't look overweight. The scale and weight as a metric of success is just so flawed. And that ties into BMI as well. The take home message here, don't let the scale be the overall measure of progress for you. Take progress pictures, lift weights, get stronger, focus on how you feel because the scale as it shows in this short right here, the woman only lost 10 pounds, but she looks a hell of a lot healthier. Okay, so we gotta take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is, of course, Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix that offers everything you would want in an electrolyte drink and nothing you wouldn't want. Most electrolyte drink packets out on the market have a bunch of added sugars and junk in them that you do not need. Element has none of that. I've been using Element and taking it pretty much every day for a year now. It was first recommended to me from my trainer, Alex Bush from Physique Development, when I was complaining to him about headaches getting in the way of my strength training workouts. I started taking Element in the morning first thing before my strength training workouts and the headaches went away and I was able to have better lifting sessions because of it. Element is used by everyone from Olympic athletes to everyday moms and dads. Element was kind enough to offer viewers of this video a free sample pack with the purchase of any order. That's eight single serving packets free with the purchase of any Element order. You can get yours now by going to drinkelement.com Juliana. That's drink 
lmnt.com slash juliana. My personal favorites are the watermelon and raspberry flavors. I like to put it in a 40 ounce tumbler with some ice. Mm, tastes so good. I also really enjoy their chocolate packs at night to curb those chocolate cravings because God knows I always get some chocolate cravings late at night. Thank you so much to Element for sponsoring this video. Okay, the second short we're gonna watch, losing weight as a US American in Germany. Let's see what she has to say. Hey, you lost some weight. Been working out? Literally never. No. Watching what you eat then? I had cake for breakfast today. <laughs> Must be the breastfeeding. No, I gain weight when I'm breastfeeding. Okay, then how are you losing weight? I immigrated from the US to Germany. Huh? What do you mean? I have workers' rights. That doesn't affect your weight. I'm a lot less stressed with a month of vacation. Oh yeah, stress affects weight in a ton of ways. Mm hmm and a lot of my favorites, like cake, are made with less sugar due to German preferences. Oh, really? Oh, and the cities are walkable. So you're walking more. And I have universal health care. How does that help? Because I can get treated for things like chronic pain, which changes my eating habits, like comfort eating. Whatever, you just need a calorie deficit. And a functional social system has helped me achieve that. What are the healthiest countries, actually? I'm curious. So if you look at this map right here, it looks like the US, as a first world country as we are, we are definitely not that healthy. But Australia is super healthy, and a lot of Europe is really healthy. But America, we're just failing. And that is true. In America, there's a lot of inequality when it comes to getting access to good, healthy food. If you haven't heard of this before, there's a thing called food deserts where there are pockets of places where people live where they have to drive miles and miles just to get to fresh produce. And obviously, if you can't get fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and good quality whole foods, that's gonna make your whole weight loss journey a lot harder. Also, if the whole foods are overpriced or too expensive, you're gonna gravitate towards the ultra processed foods, which we know make it a lot harder to lose weight. I share this with you guys because in, I, you know, I've been guilty of this where I talk a lot about how important it is to be in a calorie deficit because I think sometimes people lose sight of that. But at the same time, is it as equal for everyone to be in a calorie deficit? No, definitely not in America because of things like food deserts and because of the cost of fresh produce and fresh vegetables in America. And because of what's going on in our school. Hi, hope oh, she's still sleepy. And because of what's going on in school systems, if you look at what we're serving kids in school, I just like watched a YouTube video the other day from a fellow YouTuber, I think her name's Kim. I don't remember her last name, but I'll put it right up here. She was talking about how they're like, now they did a deal to serve Lunchables at schools. Like there is literally nothing whole about a Lunchable meal. Even though I have some nostalgia thinking about Lunchables and how much fun they are, there is nothing healthy about giving your kids a Lunchable meal. No shame in giving your kids a Lunchable meal from time to time. I mean, by all means do it, but that's the best we can do for US children. That sucks. And like, if you think about it, obesity really kind of starts now these days in childhood. There's a lot of reasons for that. I'm, we're not gonna go into that in this video, but I share this with you because if you are someone that is judging yourself or judging other people that can't lose weight, access to the tools that we know create weight loss aren't as easily accessible for every single person. I know for me, it was not particularly easy for me to get access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And so, you know, I, it's, it's just harder. It's harder for some people to learn those healthy habits because a lot of our food habits are ingrained from childhood. So if you just grew up in an atmosphere where you're constantly eating ultra processed foods, you're confronted with a vegetable, you're like, what the hell do I do with this? I don't even know. Short number three, we're gonna check out. She lost 370 pounds. For the last four and a half years of my life to lose 370 pounds. Wow. And that in four amazing. days, I am having an abdominal plastic surgery to remove my hanging apron stomach. You can see it hangs down to my knees. This is what it looks like when I sit down. Um, it makes me look much bigger than I actually am. Um, it's very painful. It's embarrassing and it's shameful. Um, but I try to focus on the yeah, fact that I'm a weight loss Absolutely. warrior. I have worked really hard to save my own life. Um, and you in a few days, this is all going to be gone and my life is going to be forever so proud changed of you. Amazing for the job. better. So this is what pisses me off about body positivity. You have people like Tess Holiday that 
are preaching that morbid obesity is healthy. I know that I'm healthy. And then you have women on the other side that are like this, that are like, look, I got to being morbidly obese and now I have to go have legit surgery to get all this excess skin removed from my body. Like that, that sucks. What I like about body positivity is it says to people, be proud of yourself at any size. And I agree with that, but it's where Tess Holliday starts saying things like, I'm healthy, I'm able to keep up with my kids. You could never keep up with my two-year-old at that size. There's no way in hell you could keep up with my two-year-old at that size. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Big mom hug. And I will see you guys in the next video.